Why is James White's book endorsed by a Jesuit? Seems kind of strange. I mean, uh, James White is, proclaims to be a, a Calvinist and things like this, and uh, most Calvinists throughout history have been very much anti-Roman Catholic. People say, well, he debated Roman Catholics. Oh, uh, yeah, but there's things within the Jesuit oath that say about speaking against your own holy church, speaking against the Roman Catholic Church as a Jesuit. So that's not really proving anything. But let me show you the quote here. Here I have the two books, the earlier edition and then the later edition, attacking Bible-believing Christians. And, of course, you know, the little Jesuit game that uh, White and his followers play is they say, he's not attacking those who use the King James Bible. He's, he's not attacking the King James Bible. Just the fact that he goes through and tries to point out errors in the King James Bible and, and mocks and puts down those who use the King James Bible, but he's not attacking... <laughs> Okay, little mind control tactic that these Jesuits are good for. You know, they, they use uh, sophistry, Jesuitical sophistry, well, they, where they will say that they're not doing something while they're doing it. Playing little word games is what it is, mind control. But anyhow, let me just show you here the quote. Zoom in here. Here we have uh, Norman Geisler. This is the best book in print on a topic too often riddled with emotion and ignorance. Same thing in the newer edition right there. You have it. All right. There you go. There you go. You say, what's this have to do with a Jesuit? Norman Geisler is a Jesuit. Let me show you the proof. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here. Well, that's, can you get my, uh, the camera there over at my desk? Forgot to I put my camera over there. Got to get it here. Um, around the other way. This is Dunka. All right. I'm going to go kind of low tech. I don't have Camta Camtasia on this computer. So I'm just going to use a little digital camera here just to show you. Um, show you what's on the internet here. Here we have normangeisler.com about Norman Geisler. Okay, there he is. Norman Geisler, PhD, is a prolific author, veteran, professor, speaker, lecturer, blah, 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 blah. Cross between, I thought this was interesting, Thomas Aquinas and Billy Graham. Uh, I wouldn't want to be associated with either man. But down here it says, um, Norm has authored or co-authored all these books and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's taught theology, philosophy, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. It talks about in the Bible, the book of Colossians there. Um, professor uh, Veritas Evangelical Seminary. It sounds kind of Catholic to me. But um, here's his education list. Now, here's where it's interesting. First of all, you have Wheaton College right there. That's Billy Graham's, which Billy Graham is a sellout to the Vatican. But here's the big one. How about, how about Loyola University in Chicago? And he got a Ph.D. in philosophy. You know, <laughs> Yeah, okay. PhD in philosophy. Here you have it again. Norman Geisler. This is a Moody Bible publisher right there. Norman Geisler, Loyola University. PhD, Loyola University. All right. And I'll just show you here really quickly this Veritas Evangelical Seminary. You know, defending the faith. You know, Again, it's, it's a very Catholic thing there. And I know the Bible says, you know, earnestly contending for the faith, but defending the faith, that's very much Catholic, what they say. So, hmm. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to show you something else here in just a minute, but that uh, also will tie into this thing very nicely. But you say, people say, well, he just, look, he just went to, uh, you know, um, Loyola University, okay, you know, so it's named after Ignatius de Loyola, you know, and uh, the founder of the Jesuit order, uh, you know, big deal. He just went, he got a degree that doesn't make him a Jesuit. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, some guy of his level that goes to a Jesuit, openly Jesuit school, and then ends up teaching in liberal, you know, universities like Dallas Theological Seminary, 
uh, he's a Jesuit. Don't tell me that you can go through Jesuit schooling and come out somehow opposing the views of the Jesuits. I mean, give me a break. I mean, you know, if you're one of James White's followers, maybe you're stupid enough to believe that. But, uh, you know, Bible believers have been around for a while. We know better. But uh, just, you know, and, and look at the, if Norman Geisler is a Jesuit, let's just be, let's look at this thing logically for a minute. If he is a Jesuit, what would one of the, the biggest things be that he would oppose? King James Bible-believing Christians. We're the biggest threat to uh, popish persons. We always have been. That's why the Roman Catholic Church has never once endorsed the King James Bible. They'll endorse the NIV. They'll endorse the New Revised Standard Version. They even have Catholic editions of it. They'll endorse those new versions. They'll sell them. But you will never find Catholics endorsing, truly endorsing, the King James Bible. You'll never see it. So, for a Jesuit to come out and say something on the Bible version issue, no, no surprise that he says the best book in print on a topic too often riddled with emotion and ignorance. That's what he says about you as a Bible-believing Christian. Or a Bible-believing Christian, excuse me. You're emotional and you're ignorant. But we're not attacking you. You're emotional and ignorant, but we're not attacking you. We're saying it in love. <laughs> See, we're smiling, you know. Sure, sure. Let me show you something else that's interesting about the older edition here of this King James Only controversy. I thought this was kind of telling, and I've showed this in uh, my Ridiculous Bible per Perversions of the New Age video. Here you have, on the inside of the book, uh, some Latin there, and a tracatra. Hmm, how about that? Used by witchcraft, as well as the Roman Catholic whore, which is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Uh, witchcraft is, is subservient to the Vatican. But right there you have it. Again, a pagan symbol. And you say, well, uh, you know, well, he probably realized it was pagan and, and took it out and stuff because he's a fine Christian. Well, uh, if that's the truth, and again, this is from the old video, why would he write a book called The Forgotten Trinity and put the same symbol on the front? The heart of Christian belief. Putting a uh, pagan symbol on there. Hmm. When the Bible clearly says that we're not supposed to make uh, graven images of the Godhead. Interesting. But you say, all oh, this is just all just so crazy, you know. And we won't even get into the fact that James White recommends the Nestle's text. The Nestle's text, which actually, you know, what, what I'm going to get into that because... I get this all the time from uh, little James White's followers. You know, you can't prove it. You can't prove it. He doesn't say anything about the Vatican. <laughs> okay, princess. I am going to prove it to you. Here we have the Nestle Lund, 27th edition. I have the 28th up there on the shelf above me. And we have page 45, the introduction. And you can just read that if you want to. But it's an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies. It has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. Do you see it? Yes, the Nestle's text is done under the Vatican's supervision. And they get their little boy working on the team here of scholars. I'll show you this guy. This guy's name, Carlo Maria Martini. Look it up. Google it. Get yourself an education. Okay? James White and his ilk are always tell, saying that uh, people like me are emotional and ignorant. You know, this little Jesuit buddy there, Geisler. Uh, okay, well, I'm so ignorant, so don't trust me. Go to Google and type in Carlo Martini and see what you come up with. And what you're going to find is he was a Jesuit cardinal. Yeah, the Jesuits, a uh, Roman Catholic sect that their whole purpose, their whole uh, reason for being founded back in the 1500s was to bring all people back under the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. Interesting. But it doesn't end there. Let me show you one other thing here quickly. Again, I'm going to use my camera.
Okay, now we're going to go to, this is kind of an oxymoron thing, I think it's kind of funny, the uh, biblicalcatholic.com. <laughs> I think that's funny. That's an oxymoron if there ever was one. The word Catholic's not even in the Bible. So it's kind of humorous there. David, Dave Armstrong, author, is an American Catholic apologist, author, and blogger. His blog, which includes material from his previous website, contains more than 2,500 articles defending Catholicism. They're not Christians. They are Satanists. They are cannibalistic Satanists. And uh, born in 1958, there's his books, Biblical Defense of Catholicism, One Minute Apologist, The Catholic Verses. So let's go and we'll click on here. Hmm. Interesting. Enter apologetic site. Nice little uh, New World Order, all religions come together thing. Evangelical Catholic apologi apologetics. Philosophy. That'd line up with old Geisler, wouldn't it? Let's look at recommended books. Hmm. I wonder who a Catholic would recommend. Let's click on Protestant. Starting up here, Protestant Apologetics. Oh, Christian Apologetics by Norman Geisler. Oh, another book by Norman Geisler. Norman Geisler. Norman Geisler. How about that? Huh, isn't that interesting? Norman Geisler being recommended by a Catholic. And uh-oh, James White, The Forgotten Trinity, the book that I just showed you a little bit earlier. Hmm. How about that? Uh, another one by James White. Scripture Alone by James White. Isn't that interesting? Hmm, how about that? Uh, another Norman Geisler. Uh, D.A. Carson, another man that attacks the King James Bible-believing movement. Another book by James White. Huh, isn't that interesting? You know? So... How about that? I find that very interesting that uh, a Roman Catholic would recommend James White's books and Norman Geisler. Uh, if, if those books were, if White and Geisler were such a threat to Catholicism, uh, they would be on a list of heretical books that you're not supposed to read. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. They just need to make one little more add-on here. I was looking at the website a little bit farther and down the page a little bit. I didn't go far enough down. He actually does, this Catholic actually does recommend James White's book. And he does something else very interesting. Look at this. Here you can see it. The King James Only Controversy by James White. Okay, again, you know, biblicalcatholic.com. So I'm showing his website here. But then you say, well, what's he doing with Gail Ripplinger's book? Well, he recommends Gail's book, but then, see, here it's refuted by James White. Isn't that interesting? That's how these Jesuits work. Okay, see, read this one, but make sure to get James White's book refuting it. Who do you think James White is uh, really in bed with here? Who do you think he's really working for? Uh, let me see. Probably the Catholics. And check this out, too, the thing of anti-Catholic books. James White, James White. There's two books by James White. Right there. Hmm. So what's going on there? Well, James White is controlled opposition for the Catholics. He recommends their Bibles, okay, their text, and the Bibles that come from them. Um, he'll never tell you that uh, the NIV or the New American Standard or the Dewey Reams or any of them are satanic. They're just different ways of it being written and shades and nuances of the Greek and whatever else. But you'll not, you'll not see this Vatican Catholic here recommending strong Bible-believing Christian books that really, truly refute their positions. They just use their little uh, Jesuit coadjutors that aren't really going to draw anybody out of the Vatican's system. That's why... I don't recommend you even wasting time with a guy like this. See, I've explained this before. Let me just say it one more time here in closing. And that is when you are dealing with a man that is an heretic, you admonish him twice and the third time you reject him. All right? According to Titus chapter 3, verses 9 through 11, I believe it is. Don't waste time with people like this. 
You see, once they have a philosophy that the King James Bible is not true, they will continually come out with new questions and new opposition. They'll just continue coming out with them until they can get you on one that you can't answer. And then they say, see, your whole system's flawed. See, their philosophy is they do not have the philosophy of believing that God has a book preserved that's without error that you can hold in your hands. They don't believe that. The authority has to be invested in something else. A man, a scholar, a church. Yeah. So that's why I say don't even waste time with this kind of junk. All right? I have a lot of these books because I refute them. And maybe some you know, people said, could you please do a, a thorough refuting of James White's book? Well, other people have. You know, Ruckman has, and, and there's been a whole bunch of other people that have refuted his book. So, you know, to me, I'm just like, well, I can, you know, but it's other people have already. You know, there's work for me to do, things that have people have not done or whatever else that the Lord places in my heart. Or I get requests from people. Could you please do something on this or whatever? I try to focus on that. But maybe at some point in time, if I get caught up with my projects, maybe I'll come out and refute this stupid nonsense. And it is stupid nonsense. But you see, people with this philosophy, people in the James White camp, they don't want a Bible that is free, uh, free from error and perfect and pure. They don't want that. And they want to be able to say, well, we can explain everything away and stuff. They don't want to live by faith either. See, that's the, that's the whole issue. They are practicing atheists is what they are. Maybe not professing atheists, but they are practicing atheists. Their God has no, there's no real authority or anything from him. Uh, he does not have a written set of scriptures that they can rely on. He had one at one time, perhaps, maybe, but we don't know where it is. It's lost. It's probably, he raptured it up to heaven someplace. He called it up there and that's where it lives or whatever. It's nonsense. So don't waste time with this. Somebody comes and says, hey, you ought to read James White's book. No, no, don't even waste your time with it. Okay, all he's going to do is get you back under the bondage of the Vatican. That's all he's going to do. I just showed you the proof. And again, if you know that a guy is a Jesuit, why would you put his endorsement not on the back or some kind of thing, on the front cover? Norman Geisler, Jesuit. And you put his endorsement at the very top of your book? Oh boy. <laughs>